Hello and welcome back to Talk 20s podcast. You may notice there's a slight new host today and I am Georgia for those that don't know but less than a week ago or six days ago today our very own Gabby Mendez got married. She's now officially Gabby Salisbury. I always forget how you say that but Gabby Salisbury and today we've got her husband on for the very first time and welcome to the podcast Don. If you've seen us on TikTok or YouTube, you'll know that we've got our hands on the brand new Shure M7 Plus mics. Now, I'm not gonna pretend to be a tech pro, but from what I hear from the guys who edit and sit behind the cameras, these mics are next level good. If you wanna start your own podcast or you're a gamer or you're a home recording musician, these mics are perfect. I'm gonna make an analogy here with cars. I'm rubbish with cars. I basically only know them for their colors. You asked me to pop the bonnet and I don't know what's inside, but essentially we're looking at the Ferrari of mics here. They've even got this multicolored LED touch panel, which we haven't got on at the moment, but it does light up and it's very flashy. It's really, really cool. Anyway, thanks Shaw for sending over these mics to us for the brand new studio that we've got here, hashtag gifted. Uh, but yeah, we're so appreciative and uh, we're gonna be using them all the time. We're super proud that this podcast is brought to you in partnership with our headline sponsors, Zopa Bank, who are one of the UK's leading digital banks. If you've not heard about Zopa before, they're all about fair, simple, and easy to use financial products. My personal favorite is their Zopa Smart Saver, where you can create personalized pots for your different savings goals. To check them out for yourself, head to your app store and search Zopa, that's Z-O-P-A, and start saving from one pound. The interest is payable monthly and is subject to variation. Back to the show. How do you feel? Thank you. Really, really good. Really good. Very excited. So for those that don't know, they've actually been together for 10 years um, and they actually tied the knot in Cyprus, which is why we're also tan. How's it feeling like a week into being married? Guys, I've got a husband. Like that's actually <laughs> crazy. Like I can't believe it. But um, yeah, literally the best, the best day of my life. Like the best, <laughs> best day, the best week. Um, week. and it's definitely the definition of like you know being old now in a way <laughs> like um being married is like oh yeah shit i'm actually really old now <laughs> yeah i'm an old man i feel yeah, old yeah. yeah what's your overall reaction to the wedding uh, everything went according to plan okay did to it? a certain extent did it to a certain extent in its own way i think I, it went according to plan yeah because i heard extent. that someone was kind of on the news for even before they went to the wedding well if we're starting from the very beginning yes. from the moment that we kind of set off like we had done all our prep like getting ready for the wedding and like you kind of have to do quite a lot before you leave the country like okay. in terms of like you know sending final things off to the wedding planner and organizing so many different things and getting your birth certificates and all that kind of stuff. I am ADHD, so I am not the best at being organized, but I was the most organized I've ever been in my life. Like, and I've been, uh, you know, I used to work as an event planner as like a, a job before. And obviously we've done twenties first, huge events before. I'm work used to working on big events and I always, feel like the last few days are so stressful mm -hmm. because you're just running around here, there, everywhere. But I felt so calm. I was like, I felt like I had everything in order to the point where I was like, it's going too well. I'm like, this is actually a weird feeling. I was like, everything is going too smoothly. I feel totally ready. I feel totally chill. Um, and we were flying out to Cyprus a couple of days before our wedding guests got there because we had to do a few important things before people got there, which was see our venue for the first time okay. because we'd never seen it in person. You'd never even been to Cyprus, had you? We had the Unfiltered um, Brides on the Unfiltered Brides on the podcast just before you guys went away. Mm -hmm. And we filmed it like months before. And you announced on that podcast that you'd never seen the venue. And I don't know if you've seen on our TikTok, that's got like 400,000 views now. <laughs> so the story of Gabby saying that she'd never seen the venue, when you actually first seen it, like what, what was your first impression of seeing somewhere that you've never been to but you've paid a lot of money for i think it's quite nice the Is fact it? that it was a surprise yeah. okay. like the fact that you were literally never been there before um and you're practically relying on you know social media tiktok etc that what you see from there is going to be amazing mm -hmm. um and just trust in that um but when we first arrived it was at the first arrived at the hotel we were like the hotel we were staying in was amazing beautiful um and then when we got to the venue the venue was everything it, was it exceeded better. expectations it was better and that's all you imagine. want like, that's all you mm -hmm. want 
Yeah. But what about the airport, guys? Mm, I know. Because... Well, that was when we got to Cyprus, but before we got to Cyprus, there was quite a bit of drama. So this we woke up... This is how you up, started your wedding This is how... Well. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's kind of crazy. But we woke up on... So we're flying out on the Sunday, a few days before our family and friends, and we're flying <laughs> out from Manchester Airport. If anyone heard the news on Sunday, the 23rd of June, you'll know that Manchester Airport had the biggest power cut they've ever had at something like six o'clock six in the morning. And, hours, yeah. and we were f- due to fly at three o'clock that day. And obviously no morning flights were taking off and we could see on the news. I think you know when something's bad, mm-hmm. when it hits BBC News and it's a news notification about on your phone. An airport as well. About an airport. Yeah. And it's like Manchester Airport in like, oh, it was just a nightmare. And so we were like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> We were like, shit, we're supposed to fly to our wedding today. And actually I went to go in my, the girl who was doing my nails, she'd actually been away at another wedding just before. Um, So she was doing my nails. She doesn't usually do nails on like seven o'clock on a Sunday morning, Mm -hmm. but to fit it in between her being back from her wedding and me going to my wedding, she was doing my nails just before we were about to go to the airport really early in the morning on the Sunday. That is commitment. Which is so cute. Like honestly, shout out to Lossie. She's absolutely incredible. So I went and got got my nails done and I remember you ringing me whilst I was in at, at the salon and you saying like, Manchester airports had a power cut. Like is I this at 7am? Yeah, literally, it was so early. Wow. Um, and you were like sending me videos that you'd seen on, on Twitter and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, like I just, and in my head, I immediately told myself, there's no way we're going today. There's no way we're getting on a plane today. Mm-hmm. Like you just know when you see something from Manchester, you see something like that, you just know it's not going to happen. So I was like, I just, I think I just re- like, let it out to the universe I'd accepted the fact that we probably would get on a plane that day anyway we get back and then we start we were watching like Sky News and stuff like that and they were reporting on there and I was thinking I just did like a little video of my stories like guys how funny that I felt so calm <laughs> and then literally the next day the airport was something had to happen anyway we rang our travel agents they were shut but they had like this 24 hour line so we rang them and they went and I was like look guys like we are trying to fly to our wedding and like although like yeah it's not tomorrow th- there are some things that we have to like we have to go to the town hall we have to like do a sign our register there's mm-hmm. so many things that we have to do this week which you can't get married unless and you can't get married unless you do those things so I was like we do really need to get out there like ASAP Um, and uh, they managed to like get us through on the uh, jet to we're flying with jet to shout out jet to if you ever want to sponsor this podcast I wholeheartedly (laughs) will sing your praises till the day that I die Um, because they were incredible weren't they we actually managed to get on the phone to someone from jet to who had got married in Cyprus nine years earlier so knew exactly what we were experiencing and she was like I'm gonna get you there like no worries at all she was like where else could you get to now this was had actually ended up it was about 12 o'clock when we were having these eventual conversations with jet to and they were like she tried to look at Leeds she tried to look at Liverpool they didn't have any flights that were going out that day she was like Birmingham has flights that are going out it leaves half an hour later than your Manchester flight it leaves at 3 30 can you get there in time this was midday and you live in Liverpool oh, yeah exactly it's a two hour drive, a two yeah. Hour drive. Yeah, yeah. so we were like and there could be traffic it was like a really hot busy day um you know like there's always like busy roads it was mm-hmm. Sunday right and Dan was going you said to me no well, my you? my instinct was like M6. You yeah. know what it's like. <laughs> the M6. You don't want to you don't want to confirm it and then be stuck in traffic. Yeah, we didn't uh, exactly. want to then race to get there and then completely miss yeah. that and be like, yeah. you know. So you said no and then I put the lady on jet to on you and I went I really think we can make it. And again, that's me being very optimistic. She put time. her foot down. I'm such a time, like, I'm just like, time you blind. know, time blind. time blind. I'm like, we can do it. Even if it was half an hour and I said we could do it. Yeah. I was like, I feel like we can get there. I really feel like we could do it. And he goes... Okay then, I turned off the mute button yeah. to the woman on Jet 2 and was like, okay, we're gonna do it. And she was like, okay. So- um, I feel, we, I love that she's so involved in yeah. this as well. Like she's oh, probably- She's brilliant. She's yeah. great. She's, she's so great. And so um, we started like rushing and like zipping and like doing up our case and stuff like that, knowing that we literally had to leave that next second. And like, mm-hmm. we'd kind of slowed down our getting ready because we kind of resounded to the fact that we weren't doing it. So there was yeah. really like a last minute scramble. So we start zipping up the cases. We zip up one case, we zip up two case. We go to zip up the last case and the zip on the case completely <laughs> busts. Completely busts. We were literally like, I would burst out crying. So obviously this had all of our wedding stuff in. Yeah. This had all our different things. Like if that had happened in the <clears throat> airport, we'd have been 
screwed. Like we were so lucky that it happened at home. So literally your mum lives five minutes down the road. We were like, hello Val, can we need another case? We need another case. So your dad had to go up in the loft, get another case down, drive it to us. This was all before we had like time to get to the airport. <laughs> he drove it to us. And this is this had like presents for people that were coming to our wedding. Mm-hmm. Stuff like, so she wasn't allowed to see it. So I, she, I like ran out to the car, <laughs> grabbed the suitcase, shoved everything into the suitcase and we shoved it in the car and we started like racing it down right. the M6. And whilst I was, whilst we were like driving and stuff like that, we then realized this gets even worse guys. We then realized we didn't have, our travel insurance had expired. Like always check your travel insurance, but we (laughs) did it. So we were like, even if this is like something you can claim back on your travel insurance, we don't have any. So we're last minute buying travel insurance. We're last minute rebooking our airport car parking. Like everything was so last minute. And whilst you're there, I snapped a TikTok video. Just was this all within the chaos? This like, was all within the chaos. Yeah. I snapped a TikTok video and I whacked it up and I just explained what we were doing. And obviously everyone was talking about Manchester Airport that mm-hmm. day and it just went crazy, didn't it? It went crazy. And then didn't BBC, you and stuff on the phone with BBC? Is that right? You did, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then we were just like driving and obviously like Jet 2 <laughs> were like ringing us like, are you going to make it? Do you think you're going to get there on time? Mm-hmm. And we were like, yeah, like they're like, we've told like the, the check-in and stuff like that. Then I started getting like this call from like this m- random number. And I was like, who is it? Anyway, I answered it and he goes, hello, it's Peter from the BBC. And I was like, um, <laughs> hi. hi. <laughs> and he was Am like, yeah, I've, I've, I've managed to get your number from our system. And I've been on smaller radio yeah. stations before, like about 20s m- like, like about 20s first, like BBC Radio Merse size. But this was BBC radio one news beat <laughs> and i was like so random how you've managed to get my number he was like i'm just wondering if you'd like to be on on news beat today and i was like um yeah sure so we like <laughs> recorded a little thing that ended up on bbc radio one news beat that day so i don't think i wait like realize that that day that would that uh, that would be the day that i would end up on the radio but anyway race it to the airport and we got through check-in i tell you a life hack everyone obviously <laughs> like this this isn't true for everyone but the thing that i did was i had a little headband that said bride on it Uh uh-huh it got me through every single security fast track because i was like i'm gonna miss my wedding and then they let me through (laughs) every single time so pro tips for everyone just start wearing bride start wearing bride bride hats and stuff you get through everything and what about the groom did they let the groom through with the bride just (laughs) about yeah but but birmingham airport was carnage oh my god there's so much refurbishment going on so many people also got sent to that airport so it's like even worse than usual the 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 security queues were the guys who sat next to us on the plane said he stood in the security queue for two hours Oh. Two hours. We, we didn't did have the time. We did it in five minutes. Who <laughs> <laughs> was meant to do it? Five minutes. Like, oh, I feel so Had a quick bad. Burger King and then went on the flight. Yeah, <laughs> we even managed to, we had a chance to get a you Burger King. We, so we had time in the did end. Did you get any free tips for having the bride hat on? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. no extra dips. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then we made it to the plane, albeit, albeit from Birmingham, not Manchester, yeah. but we got our flight to Cyprus. So that was immediately the beginning of the wedding, like. But it was stress. So, you know, it, it was stressful. Really, really easy, breezy yeah. start to the wedding. <laughs> like, never seen your venue. Mm. Flight got cancelled. <laughs> it's all going so perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Was... And then when you got there, so you had like, obviously, was it two, three days of yeah. just chill time before everyone else arrived? Yeah. Was that needed? Like, would you recommend that for people? Defin- definitely I think I think the order of how we did the wedding was perfect wasn't it so we got there a couple of days before everyone else arrived mm-hmm. then everyone had a couple of days before the wedding yeah. then everyone had a cup most people had a couple of days yeah. after the wedding um and it was just it was just felt perfect for us like I think it was nice to have those few days before the madness like officially started we, we were able to like suss the place out yeah because obviously yeah. we were new to going there to, yeah. to we never seen the hotel for we never, never seen the, the venue country. you know never been to the country so like <laughs> just been, sussing out yeah. like Another thing that was so perfect is that my grandparents came and they are 80 and 82 Mm -hmm. and they don't speak a word of English. They only speak French. And I think what's really hard when you're at a wedding is that like you want to spend time with every single person that comes. You want to be able to give them like everyone each and as much time as possible. But they arrived with like a crop, like, maybe four or five hours but at like a meal time basically before oh, okay. everyone else so we got to go on like a, like have a dinner with just them That's which really felt sweet. super special because we obviously then when all our friends and rest of our family and stuff arrived mm-hmm. we had less one-on-one time with them even though my pappy was incredible on the dance floor he was he was so amazing was. but it was just really nice to like do them to obviously I had to do the tour in French and everything like that, but show them all the hotel and everything so they kind of we got that special time with them first off as well I thought that was really that just worked out well. All these little things just ended up working out really well. Yeah, yeah. and do you speak French, Dan? No. 
Go and say your best French. Très bien. <laughs> Très bien. <laughs> That's all he says. Um, it. Comment ça va? <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. gone. How does that work then? That your your now wife is half Portuguese slash kind of French. How do you speak to the grandparents when you speak to the grandparents? I've got to communicate through Gabs, haven't I? You oh, it's, you know what I mean. It's like I'll ask I'll ask Gabs a question to ask them. Yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, um, you communicate through me. Although I did go to the toilet in the airport when we picked them up from the airport, and I left them. Obviously, like mm-hmm. they can't really communicate with one another. But you were just making when I came back over you were just making great big hand gestures at each other like <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you were really trying you're very like, deep in conversation I think we were talking about like how hot it was over yeah. there you know what I mean so you're like <laughs> yeah you yeah. literally have to do your best very acting much so. your very best much acting so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that that's so that's that's a nice like first couple of days like, yeah. and I assume then as well like you'd recommend for people kind of not to get to the destination like a day before just in case the flight's Oh, yeah. Arkansas and like try and do like two, three days. Yeah, you need, the actual time, you need to set, you need to settle yeah. in, don't you? You need yeah. to get your bearings and where you where also want a pre tan. I feel like <laughs> yeah. you don't want that first day burn, no. like just before you get married. And then, so you've been there a couple of days, you're chilling. What is it like the night before you are about to marry someone who you've like known for ten years, or even ha- what? Just what is it like? Like what is that feeling that you've got? Um, For those that don't understand, I am not a married woman, so I I can't relate. I think it's like, um, how to put this? Um, I think it's quite it's excitement okay. because it's a, obviously, um, but it's a bit like unknown. It's like you only have well, most people probably only have like one wedding day. You know what yeah. I mean? So <laughs> it's like it's like it's really really unknown. So it's like you're not sure like how how things are going to progress, and, mm. and everyone just says like just you know, take it in. You know, every literally minute. Yeah. You know, just really be present. Um, so it's um, yeah, it was it was very unique experience, and, and it's a bit you just don't know what to expect. Because were the the first like when you got there, was you nervous, or does it all kick in the night before the actual wedding? Like like these nerves, or is it kind of like the week of? Well, I, I didn't. I didn't think I was nervous at all. Okay, but I was sick the night of the wedding, so. <laughs> The, the, the night people before. the night before yeah. yeah the night before you yeah, were sick so. the night before the wedding yeah I know I had we, I, I'm, never, I'm never sick after after having a a, you know, a steak yeah you know I had a steak dinner and I was texting Gabs at literally like early hours in the morning mm. wasn't mentioning that I was sick but oh. the fact that he was obviously <laughs> he was going to worry her yeah um, but um, yeah it's dead weird and and I think it was also the fact that we did it the traditional way where you know she went away to the actual venue. Okay. To to stay mm-hmm. uh, with all her bridesmaids. So you went to a night, the night before with all your lads and your yeah. family and I had the night the day before I went to all the spa with like the mums and the all the girls and all the bridesmaids and everything and then I spent the night at the venue with all my bridesmaids, which was incredible. But like I I I've struggled with anxiety and a lot of like like I said before, like a lot of like stress throughout my whole life, but I felt weirdly calm and present the whole time. Mm-hmm. I, I just felt like, cause I know I was making the right decision. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, yeah. I just know this is right. Does that mean Dan so, didn't know did you No, 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 not at all. Like I, I it was, if they said the best, the greatest, greatest thing is it felt easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they say it's like the biggest decision of your life getting yeah. married, but it also, for me, it felt really, really easy. The easiest decision yeah. you'll ever make. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but I, I wasn't anxious in terms of, like, like oh, is this the right? Yeah, thing? exactly. Yeah. It was more the anxious of like what, how things are gonna move throughout the day, and I think and you're also more nervous sometimes about the spotlight being on you as well. Yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. sort of socially <laughs> awkward at times when the spotlight's on me. I don't really like that. Yeah, um, that makes so much sense though because mm. you get told that the wedding day is all about you. Yeah. So I suppose the night before the day of it all being about you. Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's not. You were sick that you were like, oh, I don't know if I'm marrying the right person. It's like. I can't believe I've got to be so vulnerable mm. in, in front of all of these people. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, obviously, it's all the people that you love, but I suppose when you're in a relationship, people don't see that, like, lovey-dovey side yeah. of you all the time, do yeah, they? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, that's <laughs> what I mean. So it's like you've got to you got to put your, be- you know, your best act on yeah. it in some ways, and you know, if that makes sense. Um, but uh, you, obviously, it was a really enjoyable experience. Yeah. So, like, you know, it, it's not every day that I'm going to be like that. Did you tell anyone, like any of your friends, when you were being sick the night before your wedding, or did you just think, oh, I don't want to tell? Next morning, anyone. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Next morning, I told everyone, and they were just like <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> but at the, at the same time, it was just I was confused as to why I was being sick. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't I had a few drinks, but that was it. Um. But yeah. Oh, it's and then you 
you just slept. Did you get some sleep before the wedding? I did, but I didn't sleep much. I, I was up the next morning about probably half seven. Half okay. seven, I probably woke up. So, and I probably went to sleep about half two. So, I, I was living on adrenaline for the rest of the mm-hmm. day, if that makes sense. Did, um, it, have you, did you ever do any... Because I knew it was any, such a long day. Yeah, and did you ever do any, like, shows when you're in school? Like, were you ever a fear to kid or anything? Because oh, no. I... F- <laughs> Dan is the <laughs> furthest thing from a fear kid. Furthest, yeah. furthest I away. asked that because I feel like Gabby is a fear to kid. Oh, yes. So, she... I feel like you've got that experience of, you know, like, them pre-show feels like the night before a big show or something when you're doing something in front of loads of people Mm -hmm. and you get that like anxiety but you kind of know it's going to be okay where maybe because you've never done that you're like it's the first time you've ever had that feeling probably i probably have the nerves before like a big round of golf yeah the night before (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean like uh but that's quite you don't have crowds watching you do play your golf Sometimes I've had crowds, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had crowds Dan's before. a professional golfer. Yeah, yeah. I, I have had crowds, but like at the same time, like I would probably say I'd get nervous for the stuff I have yeah. next morning, definitely. Mm-hmm. And then what about the morning after the wedding? How does that, how did that go for both of you? Stressful. Stressful. Really stressful. Why? Because she wasn't here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fact is that I was missing her, Aww. you know, because I, I was like a lost puppy. Oh, you know what I mean? Me I genuinely was though, because I was like, I had loads of questions. I was like, Sugar, I'm meant to do this. I'm meant to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And the I one felt like person I, that knows we everything all the time. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The moment I went down to breakfast, I was like, I created a to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> did you actually? I was still like, like, probably on my Gabby phone. Do? <laughs> no, it wasn't what Gabby list. did. It was like, I knew I had to give everyone else the suits back because they got steamed the day before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I had to sort like the rings out to make them room really tidy for obviously the photographer and videographer to come. <laughs> so it was like, never mind, there's probably like a few other things where I was like, you know what, we hadn't opened the, um, what's it called, um, the pocket squares. Pocket, square. pocket yeah. squares, I had to give out the pocket squares to everyone. So it was like making sure I didn't forget like anything, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I suppose as well, because... I know you've both planned it, but I feel like Gabby's been more on the planning side. I feel like I'm okay to say yeah. that, yeah? yeah <laughs> Gabby's been more are. on the planning side. So you, I feel like you're probably also so chill because you're like, I know I've done everything on this to-do list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the morning I've done is like, I need to make a to-do list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> even though you've done a whole to-do list, a few things went wrong for you on the morning of, didn't they? Yeah, so um, my hairdresser got the complete wrong time for my wedding day and she arrived two hours late. Ouch. I know. What even happens in that situation? Well, I messaged my wedding planner and she was like so apologetic, but there had been like, basically she just not, she'd said yes to doing, she just wrote down that she was doing my hair Mm -hmm. rather than all of my bridesmaids hair. So like (laughs) at one point they were just walking down the aisle with (laughs) wet hair. Um, But she had not, so she had got the time wrong. So thankfully my like, my wedding planner like rang her up and was like, you need to get there like, ASAP and she managed to find a second hairdresser to just help her with like the curls and stuff like that she's an incredible hairdresser Mm -hmm. but she did get the time wrong um and so we had so we got told that the hairdresser was going to arrive at at nine and to basically be ready and everything sorted for nine Mm because we were rushing back from breakfast to be there for nine and she didn't get there till 11. Wow (laughs) yeah I know so that it did push a few things a little bit back but it also like I think when when the hairdresser arrived, I think she was expecting me to be like a bridezilla. Like she was, she would look scared when I opened the door, and I was like, "Hello!" And I just gave her a great big hug because I was like, "What can you do in that situation? You can make your hairdresser feel really uncomfortable, and for the rest of the day, Mm -hmm. or you can make it vibes, and you can just be like, it is what it is. We'll do our best. Like I, you're here now." That's all that matters. As long as you make my hair look good, <laughs> the bridesmaids are just gonna have to stop. I'm joking, <laughs> but she absolutely nailed it. Like my hair, I adored my hair in the like what she did with it was just gorgeous. Yeah, it looks um, so beautiful. And thankfully, she had another hairdresser that did all the curls, so then she was also able to put all the all the bridesmaids' hair up as well. Um, but yeah, like I was just like, I do not want to create like an atmosphere for like getting ready. Mm-hmm. Like what? Like instead, we just had like. We had party tunes on, we had musical theatre songs on, we were just all singing at the top of our lungs with mm-hmm. the makeup artists, everything. Like everyone said it was like the vibiest getting ready that That's anyone's so seen right. for the wedding. Um, and also we d- we had time like for a couple of hours, obviously to just do loads of like videos and stuff like yeah. that. So we did loads of bridesmaids videos and things. So you wanted- still had it worked out time. great, it yeah. worked out great. What yeah. about your makeup? My makeup was stunning. She did uh, such a good she job. She was on time. She was a little bit late. Okay. 
half an hour late half an hour late but we'll let it off we'll yeah. let it off when two hours yes. yeah <laughs> and what about you how long did it take getting ready for the big day probably about five minutes, well, five yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so like three hours compared to five minutes yeah i was i was like because i i i remember i liz rang uh, sorry liz our wedding planner rang yeah. me probably around about midday and i want a clock it was mm-hmm. the start of like the photography and the videography and what had happened was she rang me and i remember asking a question it was like you know where, where, you know how should i be presented when the photographer video would come <laughs> yeah. in like do it do you just want pants on me do i have to put a shirt on <laughs> like what, what how should i be yeah. presented so um anyway it was, obviously it doesn't take me long to get ready yeah <laughs> so, what was um, the vibes that you were bringing to the function like did you listen to musical theater are you getting dressed <laughs> no Is we there, like, a golf we, playlist? no we would listen to a fifa playlist a actually. fifa playlist <laughs> yeah yeah is so this a top your brother tip? The, the fifa playlist on which is good it was yeah. like reminiscent of like some old fifa songs <laughs> I didn't um, know that was a thing, like FIFA, uh, like a FIFA. Yeah, yeah. I feel like oh, I've listened to it many times. Like shaped by music, like because another story for the morning is that like basically I, we did loads of videos of bridesmaids in the morning, and mm. and if you look at my legs, like I tanned quite nice on the top half, but my mm. legs were really pale. Now in my head, the day before, I was like, oh, like I don't, I don't, I only like this part was out of my dress. I was like, I don't need to tan the rest. And then I sat there the morning of, obviously with like our hairdresser had only just shown up at like eleven. And I was like, girls, I just feel really pale. Like I was, I literally like got so upset. Um, and the girls were like, you can fake tan now. Like, and I had some filter by Molly May, and I was like, really? I was like, I don't think I've got time to fake tan now. They were like, yeah, you can. Like, mm-hmm. no, like no problem. You can just put a bit on. And I was like, okay then. So my hairdresser was doing Laura's hair. Now Laura is usually my bridesmaid. Is usually the one to fake tan yeah. me, but she was obviously in getting her hair done. So my sister fake tans me my my maid of honor holds up the towel dan's sister who's my other bridesmaid holds up a fan and i'm fake tanning myself like a few hours like literally before the wedding and then i'm sat in my towel like waiting for it to like dry for like a little bit sorry to all the towels are literally like a different color in this hotel um and then a song is playing called accidentally in love from shrek Um, and i'm hearing it and i'm listening to it and it goes i'm in love i'm in love Mm -hmm. and i was like be really cool to do like a TikTok um, to this song because in that morning we'd had so much time to create loads of TikToks. We were doing loads of trends that already existed, Mm -hmm. but then it got to the point where we were like, why are we doing other trends when we can just make up our own? So you, I was just like listening to the music and the playlist that were just randomly coming through. And I was like, this is a really cool like bit, like bridge of the song Mm -hmm. that would look really cool if you had like, all the couples like kissing. kissing to like reveal. We'll put it in this bit and, of the video. And then we did it, like we did it later on in the day. And like music is massive to us. Like that was such a huge part of our day, but that was something that I'd literally just sat there and I was like, hey girls, wouldn't it be really cool if we did this? Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, that's gone viral on TikTok and it's done really well on Instagram as well. So, but it's just the happiest like, video from that day as well i just think it's so pretty and like even like people are commenting like oh and, like the singles the single corner, corner. <laughs> but even the singles video is so sick as well yeah, they're, so, like, vibing in the corner. yeah they're all vibing in the corner so that is just such a happy memory but i think music was massive for us like yeah i'm sure we'll talk about yeah. the music of the day i i did go to the wedding guys i was there i was invited yeah. i was sat down <laughs> the most beautiful <laughs> venue by the way ever like it was so beautiful they had music going we were just speaking about music there was literally yeah. someone there singing as you arrive mm-hmm. um but then we're all set down there was some delays of you getting there gabs no i don't think any of the guests noticed really because this wonderful singer was still just like singing along bless yeah. her I um i did see <laughs> i did see dan pacing up and down at the <laughs> i think at any point i wasn't gonna come Oh, you! I knew you were coming, but I was a bit like, "Come on, Oriel, I am absolute sweating like a pig here." Like it was, it was seriously it hot. Was hot. Um, and obviously, like only half the the um, half of it was, was shaded. Was half shaded. Half of it wasn't. Um, yeah. So I was also concerned. It was about- like a monastery wasn't it like an old monastery kind of style very Mamma Mia vibes yeah it felt Mamma Mia slash Romeo and Juliet you know like there was a staircase I'll I'll try and put pictures in this episode but there was like a staircase kind of at the back Mm -hmm. and I was thinking so I was like where's she gonna walk from like where's the big entrance is she gonna come down these stairs like an angel is she gonna ascend through the gates of heaven (laughs) what's gonna go on um and I think everyone Obviously, the bride, the groom himself is waiting for this big entrance. What does it feel like when you're obviously so anxious waiting at the altar and then seeing the... Did you turn around and see or did you wait until she got to you? No, so I I got told that I'm going to wait till Josh, one of my best men, to tap me on the shoulder (gasps) and then I can 
turn to 45 degree angle. So I turned 45 degrees. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I could say that out of the core of my eye, walk, walking down. Um, and obviously to your, one of your most favorite songs mm -hmm. um, that she always cries to. Mm. What was the um, song for those? When we were young, Adele. I cry, I, I cry so hard when I hear that song. <laughs> yeah, so. It's amazing, but it's like, oh, it's just such a beautiful song. When I knew that song started, I was like, oh, she's on her way now. <laughs> 20 out. minutes late. <laughs> um, but um, standard gab stop. Um, but anyway, when, when she obviously arrived up at the altar, mm -hmm. um, probably I didn't say the first thing, so I say the best first thing I've probably ever said. <laughs> what was the first thing that you said to your nearly just about to be wife as she arrived at I the said, altar? are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> She was, in, she was in tears. Right? <laughs> she was in tears, though, and, and like just a natural response is like obviously I care for her so much. So my natural response is like you, you're all right. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you, know you want to do this. Yeah. Um, but then after you were but, cute. Yeah, yeah. Then after you were cute. Yeah. What was the What was the first thing you said, Gabby? Were you just like, yeah? I can't remember. Do you remember? Yeah, I think you said, yeah, I'm okay, yeah. or something like yeah. that. And, and then I said, but like, I you're think the, beautiful. Yeah, and then yeah, that's yeah. you look handsome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You look <laughs> handsome. And I think everyone, it's its a big thing at the wedding, obviously, what is the bride wearing? Like, mm -hmm. what is she going to wear? Um, I obviously see Gabby pretty much, like, quite a lot. Yeah, every day. <laughs> like, near, near enough weekends. every day. <laughs> even some weekends, because we are friends as well. Um, <laughs> Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift. We on Taylor Swift. I'm getting last minute Taylor Swift again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I obviously see Gabby quite a lot, but... She would not let me on her phone because she didn't want me to see what the wedding dress was. I had to be so sneaky because obviously you go on it so many times for like content and to pull stuff and pictures and things. And I had to be like, do not look at the pictures. <laughs> do not find me in a do wedding not. dress. Yeah, I, I genuinely didn't. But I actually, I did guess the wedding dress. And I, I think I was like genuinely oh, like near enough 100% right you on. You knew what I would go for. I knew what she would go for. I mm -hmm. just kind of was hoping that that was also what you go for because I was like, this is how I imagine Gabby to be as a bride. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Uh -huh. And you looked so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like even Ethan, so my boyfriend cried like a baby as you started walking down the aisle. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to. So I was like, I, I don't know if that's a thing like other men cry at yeah. someone else's wife. <laughs> 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 oh, but we love you, fun. I know. <laughs> but he's like crying. He was like, she looks so I was like, she does. Stop. And then we were watching you, Dan, being like, is Dan going to cry? <laughs> I think there's like a split, isn't there? People watch the bride or they watch the yeah. groom. I tried doing both. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I weren't allowed on. And then obviously you had the wedding. You didn't do the vows at the altar. We just did um, well, the, the sweet, civil ceremony. So we just did the, the vows that they were given to us yeah. because we knew we were doing our speeches later that had all of our special like, yeah. words to yeah. each other. And yeah. once, so basically the order of the one was used on that. Mm -hmm. And then we took some kind of like group photos. Everyone then left on the coach that was waiting for us just literally to go two minutes up the road to like the, mm -hmm. the venue. But um, what was it like after that? Did Were you alone yeah. for any aspect in between? So we had like some more some more photos, generic photos yeah. of the two of us as we were like leaving the, the ceremony bit, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And then we got on the buggy. Because um, it was our like golf, golf it was resort. our it was our golf resort. That is, <laughs> by the way, not my decision. Um, <laughs> but it was incredible. <laughs> but it was incredible. And then we went down to um, close to one of the holes where you get to plant your own olive tree. Um, did you know about that? No. So yeah. one of the things they did at our wedding venue is you got to plant an olive tree so that obviously when you go, and you can it has like a little plaque on it with your name and the day that you got married so you can like go back and see how your olive tree is oh growing my God, it's gonna make so me you've cry. got pictures of us planting yeah. this olive tree you planted yeah. the yeah, olive we tree did, that's what we did straight straight after the ceremony <gasps> so <obviously>. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't it's know cute. that yeah. I thought you were just taking pictures and then getting no, the golf buggy yeah, yeah. back no. yeah no. and then the photographers and the videographer they were incredible by the way they were so oh, so good weren't they amazing. loved them um, and they were like obviously on one buggy and they were like okay we'll meet you at the cocktail reception like we'll see you there fully expecting us to leave right now yeah. um, and we just sat on the golf buggy and caught and <laughs> caught up for like 15 <laughs> minutes we just took our time like going yeah. we knew all our guests we knew we had time at the, the wedding reception yeah. Because um, the guests just, arrived at the reception, yeah, we like, were all just having drinks. We knew our timings, yeah. and we were like, we actually have time right now, so we just caught up on. We like we do every day, like tell yeah. each other about the twenty four hours because we'd not really spoken. Like yeah. that morning, be like, oh, like I went for dinner with the girls last night, and the food was incredible, and we did this, and mm. this is what my morning was like, and this is this and this, and we just caught up about life. 
for like 15 minutes and just like had a little gossip like yeah, yeah, <laughs> like we usually do yeah, 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 yeah. didn't we and we just took our time and apparently like the the videographer and the photographer was like where are the couple like they were so stressed because <laughs> they like they thought i'd gone like had gone missing and then when we came back like our, our wedding plan was like like i'm so glad that you just chose to do that mm-hmm. because like it was probably like the perfect time in and then we like drove on the golf buggy up to the to the cocktail reception and the views were just stunning. Like I, so I don't beautiful. think I could have picked lush. a more beautiful place. Like no, it, it was, was just in the Memphis Hills. Like it was just lush. And uh, it was genuinely everyone got there and it was so lovely seeing everyone's kind of like reactions to it. Like every single person was just like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. <laughs> um, there was a DJ there like in the reception, which was really nice. And there was free drinks can we just add like everyone was probably so drunk by the time (laughs) we even went inside (laughs) getting everyone really loose for the dance floor um and then as we walk in so we're like at obviously the drinks outside and then Mm -hmm. we go into the venue i don't know what it's called um clubhouse the the clubhouse the the wedding reception wedding reception Yeah. yeah and everyone walks in obviously the seats and then these two are the, the most, if I can, I've no, never been married, but if I can give anyone a tip of how to do a wedding, they done individual letters to every single person that was sitting at the table of their wedding. So thoughtful. Gen- I think every single person cried when they got in there. You weren't even in there. Everyone was just sat for like five minutes reading these letters, like, doing not looking around. Like, <laughs> what, what made you do that? Like, what was the the inspiration behind it or was it just something you guys wanted to do well i think it was something that we wanted to do because obviously we care so much about everyone who came to the wedding yeah you know? so it's such a big effort to actually people to actually go to an abroad wedding mm-hmm. for sure. you know um to pay all that money to come and you know share that experience with us is something that we value so much mm-hmm. um and for that reason as well obviously we want to reciprocate we want to be able to show how we feel to you all um so it was uh it's emotional writing the letters oh, when we were, did you write them the whole week before <laughs> it, <laughs> it took a, a long, long time, time. Really? long yeah. time yeah we were basically just like trying to outdo each other with the different <laughs> letters like we'd yeah. write drafts and we'd be like i'm gonna make you cry with this one like <laughs> we were just like writing more and it just it felt like you know people do favors at their wedding but we wanted something that people would genuinely want to keep mm-hmm. forever like people were saying that they're taking home and they're like framing them like yeah. some of the people like not one of them was left except from nav who's just forgetful but like <laughs> literally every everyone took their their yeah. letters home and i think that kind of shows how, how much people like loved it mm-hmm. and like I'm a words of affirmation girly. Like I love to tell people how much they mean to me and how special it they are to have in your life. You just don't get that opportunity very often. Yeah. And we wanted to make the whole room, we just wanted the whole thing to feel like a celebration of love mm-hmm. in like every single kind of way. Not just like the love that we have for each other, but the love that we have for our families, the love that we have for our friends. Like we have got such a tight knit group of friends and the people that we let into our lives are really special. And we wanted to, tell them that they were special and mm-hmm. for them to feel just as special as we felt on that day. Um, I think that's why we did it. Yeah, it was yeah. such a an amazing gesture from yeah. us, don't get me wrong, but I think at the same time it was, it really, even when, 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 when we were writing them, we were getting emotional even writing them mm-hmm. um, because it was like, you know, it was really meaningful, like what we were trying to write. It was, it was hard to express at times, like yeah. how much like such People and such means, yeah, yeah. means to us. Um, you know, we shared so many, and you start reminiscing about like all these times mm-hmm. that we've had with these people. You know what I mean? And it's. Really I just think nice. you can't let life go past without telling people what they what they mean to you. Yeah. I just think in every opportunity that you do get that, like, I think it. it's it's such a thoughtful thing to do, and like. If I go to another wedding now, and I, I, I would much rather. <laughs> if I have, don't get a letter. <laughs> yeah, it's but it's it's that thing of like when people it's people's birthdays and stuff, and it's like shall I spend X amount of money on a gift for them, and or or shall I try and do it thoughtful? And it's always the thoughtful gifts that mean the most. Mm-hmm. And I feel like at weddings you don't ever, like you were saying, you don't ever get that love like reciprocated to you. Yeah. Um, it's normally like a party favor that you get when you sit down at your table, like mm-hmm. not a. Hand, like almost like a handwritten letter yeah. of love. <laughs> the other thing is we had a banquet table. So we had obviously 40 guests um, and everyone was sat on this one great big massive long, like that felt incredible, yeah. didn't it? To just have all your family you around one table. That, yeah. Oh, so glad. But like, it was all like a big banquet table as well. So it's literally all your friends and family. Like we wanted them to all experience the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Like when they got there. 
um yeah it was it was pretty special and the other thing that's mad i think is we had a wedding guest book and we read it a couple of days after wedding we didn't I don't read it straight away wedding. but like well every single letter like that people wrote in that wedding guest book it's like they were trying to outdo the la- individual <laughs> letters that we wrote for them because it is the sweetest thing isn't it yeah. like just so gorgeous yeah. like so we will try we were that. actually all sat i think you two were like just still like dancing and vibing and we were all there was quite a few of us like sat on a table outside we were all quite drunk at this time <laughs> and Sinead's going around so there was polaroid cameras yeah. um and like tape and stuff and obviously this guest book so we were taking the picture and then writing our letters yeah and I probably was what you were saying, like everyone trying to outdo each other, but we were all just like sat there like, how can I like top what (laughs) they've just wrote about me in this letter? But also we were so equally drunk that we were like, I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but I'm just going to keep writing. I know for me and Ethan, I wrote half of it and then Ethan got really angry and he was like, I want to tell them how much I love them. (laughs) Took the pen off me and was like, Right, and I was it like, half written by you, half written by you. I was going to say, I yeah. think I remember yeah. that both of you written different things. <laughs> you can see the change in handwriting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we probably wrote the exact same thing. So you just like, I love you so much, yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and obviously, the like one of the biggest things at any wedding is the speeches. Mm-hmm. Um, every single person around the table cried. I want to ask, like, first of all, how do you choose who you know who wants to do the sp- who you want to do the speeches for you? Because it's quite a big thing, isn't it? Speeches mm-hmm. at a wedding. And how did you guys find it writing your speeches as well? Um, so, so the speech order was my dad, you, me, my maid of honor, Sinead, and then your two best men, Nav and Josh. Um, and we chose them because obviously dad, groom and best man is usually the order. Mm-hmm. But because we weren't saying anything special, like in what we were saying our vows, but they weren't like our own written vows. I wanted to have an opportunity to tell, like to, to say how much dad meant to me mm-hmm. in front of everyone. Um, so that's why I really wanted to do my speech. And then Sinead literally begged me from the moment she became maid of honor <laughs> to, to do her speech. So I was like, okay, like, we, you know, all for female equality and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, and for me writing the speech, um, I wrote notes before I came out and it was kind of like all this big notes on my phone. Okay. And then I went around the pool one day just like by myself before everyone got there. And I just like rewrote into like what I wanted to say. And I was like sobbing on the sunbed, mm-hmm. like just even writing it. I was like, this is just making me so emotional. So that was me. It was, yeah. I'd probably say I probably started probably a couple of months ago. I started couple writing. Ago. I started writing some like headings of like okay. what I wanted to cover. Yeah. Um, and um, probably didn't do it till probably about a week before um, that I sort of finalised the copy of pretty much what I wanted to say. Um, and um, yeah, it was it's it's emotional giving a speech, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So um, it was. I knew I was going to tear up do, doing the speech. I, I just knew I was because um, obviously I'm talking about gaps. I'm talking about a lot of people. Yeah, that obviously it's really ones. important to me. So. Um, but yeah, it was yeah, it was a cool experience. You're not used to like saying all of these these big speeches in front of people. Like, h- did you have to look on Pinterest for any inspiration, or did it all come from the heart? Like, did you at any point? I'm really like nitpicking now, but at any point, did you like Google like how to write a speech or like speech ideas? ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Yeah. <laughs> well, I knew no, I'd get joking. something out of you. <laughs> we're joking. We're I just ChatGPT to write my Wednesday. <laughs> <speech. laughs> that was it's, a running joke. It, 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 it's pretty good for prompts, though. No? Yeah, it gives, like, you, prompt. it gives yeah, you some yeah, yeah. ideas of how to maybe tailor like certain sentences. Yeah. If that makes sense. But okay. Gen- generally, like if you're using, you know, if you do, you're writing the whole speech. You, you probably be best writing like exactly how you feel about mm-hmm. it, you know, about the topics you want to discuss, and then maybe find like better ways of like saying things and using that way it's like um just like googling like a synonym 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 for love (laughs) synonym for love and then every other word just makes no sense but they sound so good (laughs) oh yeah that was such a sweet part and then obviously the next part after that in any wedding is the music and Mm -hmm. the dancing Mm -hmm. your first dance I know you guys done dance lessons. Um, you'd never done any dance lessons before, had you done? But you s- decided to do this. Was it specifically for the one that you started doing them? Yeah, well, let's give you probably a bit of backstory. The fact is, like, I'm probably, like, I don't know, probably, like, typical man, like, <laughs> just 
never like thought about dance before. Like Chan the like, Bing on Friends. Have you seen it where he <laughs> no, like dances like this? <laughs> just like just got no rhythm. Just like generally, just really against like getting, doing it. Like Gabs mm-hmm. has been saying, "I'll come dancing with me," and I've been like, "No chance am I doing that. Absolutely no chance." Um, however, I did like give it a go for the first mm-hmm. time and. Ever since then, we've we've already been doing it for five months, and we're still continuing, aren't we? So. Yeah, we're going to still go to dance lessons. Um, how did you persuade him for for any um, you know future brides out there that are wanting their their man or wife to start dance lessons? What can we say? How did you? Get I him? didn't persuade him. Your dad persuaded you. Your dad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I was like, I really want to go to dance lessons with Dan, and I said it at, like out for dinner for them like one night. And your dad, which shocked me as well, because I didn't think he was the type to want to dance either. He was like, I've always wanted to learn how to dance. And I was like, well, I've actually found someone who can like maybe do us some lessons because even though you were saying you didn't want to do it, I was fully going to try and make us do it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I found someone. She does like like a, a, a beginner's class on like a Monday. Do you want to go? And this was like maybe four months, four or five months yeah. before the wedding. And he was like, yeah, I'm up for going. And it was like a Monday night. So we just started going to this beginner's dance class with your mum and dad on a Monday night. Georgia and Ethan are going to start joining, aren't you now? <laughs> Ethan said when he was drunk that he's, he's going to start. He's but to. four people were there and they can hold him. They all witnessed it. Yeah. Um, and we just started going. And then we just, I think it was really good because like we got to get, I think it was just confidence that it gave us like 100%. in terms of like moving and 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 how you move we did you don't need necessarily loads of private lessons just join a class where you can just build your confidence mm-hmm. in terms of like it doesn't matter what steps you're learning just how you hold each other how you move together how you communicate when you're on the dance floor like just get comfortable in that setting and then we did two private lessons because um our first dance song was you're still the one by shania twain Amazing which we choice. absolutely love um but we had live music so we didn't know how the live singer was going to do it we just knew that that was a song so she told us that it was a certain type of dance and that these are the individual steps that we could do and we mm-hmm. had some kind of like steps that followed another steps but they were like blocks of four so we could carry them on for like however until it kind of just felt right and we kind of then half freestyled half had a bit of a routine i did see some like footwork dance. on the dance on the dance floor and i was like pop off <laughs> Look how you two are i was like that is the dance lessons like i just seen the feet work and i was like neither of them are tripping up like how are they doing this and then i was like oh the dance lesson we did yeah. so we had to do a bit of practice didn't we but like yeah it was um it was cute no, I, I think couldn't recommend really anyone good. Yeah. recommend it anymore for any couple to do it is yeah. it, it even I if you're not like, getting married go to dance lessons i was just yeah. about to say that because it's such a i mean we both grew up dancing yeah i've never danced with someone like no, ballroom style I hadn't. so i feel like even when you're dancing alone there is this level of like vulnerability and like intimacy and when mm-hmm. you're like exposing yourself but to dance together it's quality time isn't it mm-hmm. Quality is that time. what helped you guys it's like a sense of achievement as well like yeah. you know when you're doing something well like you know what i mean it's uh it's really really good it's, i can't recommend it anymore mm-hmm. how did you choose your first dance song um, is this is this something hard that couples can expect to face like choosing the first dance song don't think it was hard for us we knew that that was a special song for us i think um we we tried to like oh is there any other contenders but no we just kept coming back to that didn't we but we had it was there was loads of different moments that we had different songs mm-hmm. so um coming back down the aisle once after we'd got married we have forever chris brown <laughs> which is your one of your favorite songs and also if you've watched the office like you can't <laughs> not have a wedding and not play chris brown forever when we cut the cake we had cake by the ocean mm-hmm. Because that's that song just reminds us of being in Florida and your dad like I was just like singing it when it was like vibing on the radio like back in the day, um, and so that song like had a bit of a meaning. It was just like funny that we played it with the cake. Yeah. And we walked in, we walked into Beyonce Love on Top, and then that was so iconic. <laughs> and everyone, I I started the trend. I was yeah. like, pick up your napkins, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's going around like that. It was so fun. And then we ended the night on and this was your choice actually um i've had the time of my life from dirty dancing and uh, i think that whole uh, yeah. moment will stay in my brain forever iconic. Mm-hmm. Iconic. it was iconic like basically the whole of our wedding party just started getting into this like massive circle yeah. where they were just like all dancing around and then everyone like pushed us like into the middle and then like i did like a bit of a fake run up to like do the lift and stuff like that <laughs> which was funny and then we were just like dancing and shout like screaming all the words to each other like in the middle and everyone just like was like having a good time then we like ran and did like ha- like tapped all the hands around the edge but like i don't think that moment's ever gonna go out of my brain like no, it was just same. 
Perfect. It was, it was a pretty insane way to mm-hmm. end the night. Oh, to be honest. It was mental. It was so, so good. Yeah. That That's honestly, it was the best way to end the night. And can I just say that song is also like, I love Dirty Dancing. Yeah. And I in my so, head, I was thinking, have please guys, is this what they've been learning? Are they going to do the dance? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, I imagine thought, if when you had done the lift. Genuinely, when you done that run up, I was like, oh my God, he's going to, they're going to do it. <laughs> they're going to do it. And then, and then you didn't do it. I was like, oh. Uh, we should <laughs> practice it. Yeah. yeah. Start but doing that. And dance can, it's easy to do it when you do it in the pool. So maybe we should get practicing on next holiday, yeah. on the honeymoon. On yeah. the honeymoon. <laughs> um, and then I just kind of want to end it all. Obviously, Wedding rings are obviously a massive part of any wedding. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the symbol of like the commitment, the vows and stuff. Um, there was some kind of stress with you guys mm-hmm. even before the wedding about the wedding rings. Like they didn't, they weren't finished on time, were they? Mm-hmm. And then obviously you're on holiday. Can you now share with us the crazy story of your wedding rings? This is possibly the craziest thing that has ever happened to me in my whole life, I think. <laughs> It really is. I don't know about you. You feel the same? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, so it's two days after the wedding. Yeah, still and abroad in Cyprus. We're still abroad in Cyprus with all our friends and family, and we had a great day by the pool. Um, and there's a beach like right next to where we're staying in the hotel, and so we all decide to go to the beach for a swim in the sea. Um, and this, it was like sun, sun was setting. It was absolutely gorgeous. Like the uh, like core memory for mm-hmm. me is just like swimming in the ocean. My mum was there, my two bridesmaids were there, my sister, my brother, your best man. Like, and uh, Dan, we're like running, jumping off the jetty, like into the sea and stuff like that. And we're all just like swimming about, having a, like a lovely old time. Um, and we all like get out of the water and then our dinner like that we've all booked together is like not that much later. So we're like, oh, like we really need to rush to like go yeah. and get ready. So we like go back to the room, go and get ready. Um, and then we go down to the restaurant, gorgeous restaurant, beautiful <coughs> setting, Instagrammable setting. Like just, I start taking pictures of Dan and I'm going, Dan, this is like profile worthy <laughs> photo. You look so gorgeous. You had such a, like, you look so handsome. And I was like, just snapping all these photos. And he was sat like this, just like leaning on the table like this. And I was just Tip like, oh, mountains. like you just, you know, like a gorgeous pose. And I was like, hey, just swap your hands over so I can see your ring on the other hand of your, on, on your other hand. And he swaps them over and oh. I went, where is it? This is two days after you've just got married. Two days after we just got married. And I went, where's the ring? And I, I was just blank face. I, I I was like, what the fuck? Is everyone else was, sat around this table? Everyone everyone sat, all our family and friends sat, were on one long table. Everyone sat there and literally our hearts sink and we suddenly clock on that it's in the ocean. <laughs> the ring is in the sea. <laughs> the ring that you swapped vows and gave to each other. The ring I gave him on the wedding day to signify our love is in the bottom of the sea. You know, it's like that meme, the Kim Kardashian one. I've lost my diamond <laughs> Yeah, literally. It was <laughs> literally it's your like wedding that. Ring. But it's our wedding ring. I was like, I literally just gave it to you. And for me, like, like the moment was beautiful. Did everyone get up would... though straight away? Can I just say? Did yeah, everyone, everyone, jump everyone ran to the beach. We weren't far from the beach. Everyone ran to the beach. I ran to the corner and started crying because like I like Aww. for me is I wasn't upset down at all. Like it was not his like his fault. Like that I would I would never change that moment. Like jumping into the sea it was such a core cool memory. I was more upset because I'm I like believe in like signs and stuff like that. So I was like, it does this mean like our relationship isn't gonna last? And I was just like so upset and I was just like inconsolable because I was just like, I didn't know what I like what it meant because I was like, this is so upsetting. Like to lose the ring like two days after the wedding, I was like, what? Like I think that just, is definitely a it big was thing. so emotional. But you like put I, it wasn't so much Dan's meaning fault. into it didn't everything, fit. yeah. Yeah, it didn't fit properly. Like, but you've never had a ring before, so you didn't really know what a ring that Feels fits like. should feel that's, like. That's right. I, I've never worn a ring for the whole of my life. Like, if there, it, if it was not there, and I've only worn it for two days, yeah. it's still going to feel normal to me that I, it's not on my finger, if that makes sense. Yeah. What's it feel like, though, when you're sat at a dinner table two days after getting married and your wife says to you, where is your wedding ring? What did that... What goes for your <laughs> Embarrassed. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, just upsetting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Were you jumping into the bottom of that ocean? We actually never went back to the beach, to be honest, but all our family went round down there straight away. By this point, it was dark. 
Okay. Um, and so like literally there was nothing like what can you, you what can you do you can't go and look for something in in the pitch black so we like we we go back to the table and I like we tried to like looking we, we way, yeah looking at photos to try and work out when it was lost is it definitely in the sea we were like mm-hmm. no it's definitely in the sea um and we kind of realized and uh, and I was like look like we didn't want it to ruin our wedding day, but like, you've just lost your ring. Like that's such an emotional thing. So we tried to like stumble through the dinner and like, I didn't really feel hungry or anything. So eventually we go back to the room. It's kind of the only night that I went back to the room before I wasn't the last to go back to my room yeah. basically. And we went back to our room and like, I, got, I was really upset. Like yeah. let's not deny, like I was so upset, but not not at you. I wasn't upset at you. I was more just upset at like what it meant. I was just like, oh, like so gutted. Cause I was like- it is a symbol of yeah, love. So and I was like, like, I was expecting you to wear that for the rest of your life and like, yeah literally two days later I was like oh like I feel like my bubbles burst like it was just like so sad Mm -hmm. um and I feel like it was just like a mourning process that we had to kind of like go through which we did like get to like go to quite fast and we kind of come up with an idea of a solution of like what we might do like when we were kind of doing doing that Mm -hmm. and then the next morning my brother is is like my baby brother is a trained lifeguard so he's a good swimmer but he's got goggles and he's got goggles but bless him he jumped into that ocean they got up so early him and my um and my best mate Laura they went down to the ocean Mm -hmm. that morning like as soon as like the the sun came up and they were like looking for the ring but they couldn't find anything so when they came to breakfast I was like look Tobes like I appreciate it so much but like don't worry like it's it's there's just it's not it, 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 it's so unlikely that we're going to find this ring yeah. and that morning we had a full day booked um to go on buggies around the whole of Cyprus yeah. with you and Ethan we were sat there waiting I'm getting texts like there's been some drama I'm like oh my god they've been arguing when they're drunk like yeah. you know like the bride yeah, the grooms yeah, yeah. and the groomsmen and stuff I weren't expecting to be in front of the shipwreck in the in the sea and then yeah. for you to say, Dan's lost his wedding Dan's ring. Dan's lost his wedding and ring. I was like, oh yeah. my God. All that came into my head was the Kim Kardashian meme. I felt so <laughs> bad. I was like, he's literally lost his yeah. rink in the ocean. And mm-hmm. I will also say like, it, that ocean was so choppy like the waves were crazy yeah. so not crazy. even one aspect and I'm quite an optimistic person not one part of my brain was like these guys are going to find that mm-hmm. ring I was just like you know no. it's okay because I know how big you are on symbolism and stuff yeah. I was like it's okay but yeah you and actually then, well yeah we just kind of spent the whole day like um just like kind of just getting our head around it. Like it, I think we were both sad but like it was nice to just kind of have that day that we kind of spent together just like being distracted, I guess, like being mm-hmm. out, like seeing new sights. And then we came back and and we got like in the pool and we were just by, like by the pool bar, just like chatting to Nav. Um, and my mum goes, Gabby, Dan, like come over here, come over here. And she like comes into the pool um, and she goes, so we went to the diving school um, and it's just down in the harbour and we just went down there and we just asked them like if they could just spend some time looking under the, under the ocean like if they and they just said they have 40 minutes that's all they mm-hmm. had that's all they could do um, and they went down there and they looked really really hard but they found the ring oh and literally it was on a hand like that and I was like ah. <laughs> oh my god I just can't I couldn't believe that they'd literally gone down. Did she have to pay them to do that? Or yeah, my dad yeah. had like gone and spoke to them and said, look, like, have you ever done, and they'd done it before, once before, a long time ago, they'd found some, they'd done it before. So they've got a success rate of mm-hmm. 100%. <laughs> they'd done it twice. They found the ring twice. In 26 minutes? But it took them 26 minutes of being under the water with full like kit and gear mm. and stuff like that to find the That's ring. That's incredible. And it was found. And I was like, and it's here guys, it's literally. This is the ring. <laughs> I actually can't believe it. So that ring has spent a night at the bottom of the sea and it came back to us. So I think that's the best symbolism that you can ever have. I was just about to say that genuinely is the fact that that didn't get pushed even further in, yeah. the, in the waves, like Mediterranean Sea, like it's very choppy, like how, I know. honestly, that's incredible. Does it feel weird knowing that your ring has literally like lived underwater for 24 hours? Yeah, yeah I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Just need to You're get gonna become like now. Aquaman. Needs to get resized now. <laughs> yeah. Needs to get, get it resized. resized. <laughs> so, so the whole ring in itself has been a nightmare, but hopefully it start, begins to fit. Yeah, and every time, like, you know, in like six years' time, yeah, that story, story. is still going to be yeah. as yeah. funny and as iconic as it is Crazy. today. Um, this is kind of the end of the podcast, mm. guys. It's been so nice having you on, Dan. Can I just ask for you guys to sum up your wedding in one word? One sentence, you know, something short. Movie? Yeah, like a movie. Like movie. I would literally say it was like a movie from start to finish. I um, felt like I was living in a movie, like living in a dream. Hopefully crazy. as well, like all of these stories 
you've got you know so much footage from it you're gonna be able to have this forever what is like yeah. next for you guys are you planning to have any kiddies <laughs> <laughs> i think everyone wants this too don't they yeah 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 i think we we're gonna go on honeymoon aren't we yeah we're gonna yeah, do a bit of traveling we're gonna do a little bit of traveling and then yeah wait and see yeah because obviously you got married abroad mm-hmm. so a lot of people normally get married in england or wherever they're from and then they go on the honeymoon do you know when your honeymoon's gonna be um probably uh, like this year maybe early next year i think yeah, that's what we've sort of come to a decision as, as yeah. Yeah, so. and you want to do like more of a traveling trip rather yeah. than just the okay well i'm so excited yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and we'll hope and we'll pray that that ring gets resized by the time you go on your next holiday yeah. no <laughs> jumping into the sea <laughs> until into that the ring's ocean. resized <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah thank you so much for coming on the podcast feels so weird saying this to you gabby yeah. you're on the <laughs> thank you for interviewing us jay you've been an amazing interviewer <laughs> thank you and everyone in the comments please um give dan some love because it's been his first time on the talk 20s podcast mm-hmm. and send your blessings to the new marriage and yeah thank you all so for so much for watching we will be back next week with a guest episode and that is all from us today and thank you so much guys i feel like you've watched my journey to this point so thank you for giving me a time to like talk about my wedding on the podcast i hope you've enjoyed it so. i know we all we all love gabby let's all sh- share some love with gabby in the, <laughs> in the comments thank you um but yeah see you all next week please like and subscribe and don't forget to comment below and you know feel free to like not rip into Dan, but you know, give him some yeah. some funny or comments. Send us about... your individual letters. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, tell us how much we mean. <laughs> <laughs> how much we mean. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.